now then welcome back to the channel uh, it's good to have you here thank you for tuning in please do like and subscribe if you like the content um and uh, and feel free to let me know in the comments if you need me to sort of line anything up that you're interested in, in learning more about but today what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be uh, i'm going to be installing this brake control unit in uh, in the l322 now this probably won't interest um the uh the the british land rover owners the uh, range rover owners because um we don't have such systems but um they have these in in australia and they have them in in north america in canada and in in uh, in, in america uh and what they are is they they are a system which communicates uh braking potential to the towed vehicle and they do that through through electric basically what happens is that this unit plugs up into the dashboard and uh and it and it sort of interprets or uh, communicates the braking force on the pedal uh to the towed vehicle because the there's a connection in the the wiring harness where you plug your trailer into the back of the car that goes off into the trailer and, and what happens is the more brake you put on the more um, electrical uh, uh, signal the greater the voltage is to the the trailer and the trailer has um, sort of electromagnets in the hubs on the on the trailer brakes and what happens is it, the, the more uh, voltage is sent the basically the harder the electromagnetic electromagnets come on and, and they pull the brake shoes onto the drum the brakes are quite efficient when they work uh, and it surprises me just how effective that electromagnetic sort of movement is um, I would have thought that it would have just sort of just wouldn't have applied the requisite level of pressure but it, it does and, and so that's an interesting sort of aspect but um, in my humble opinion and after having operated both um i am not a fan of this uh what they call the um uh potential braking they call this electronic electric braking potential or something they call it um and i'll tell you why because what happens is that the trailer doesn't know whether it's loaded or not um and the only thing that tells you the trailer to brake more is you pressing more on the the brake pedal of the of the car um, now in in the uk of course and in europe when you load the trailer uh, there's a little load sensing device uh, on some trailers which increases the braking potential to the wheels so the more load you've got in the trailer the more brake comes on and the less brake has to be less braking has to be done by the car the towing vehicle uh, otherwise what you have is these overrun brakes and of course the heavier the trailer the more it pushes and the more it squeezes up that overrun brake control uh, device and the more brake comes on um, and so the vehicle the tow vehicle is always left doing the same amount of braking effort and the trailer does more or less depending on what's going on uh, that's not the case over here what happens is that the tow vehicle has to press harder on the brake which puts more force on the brakes on the on the tow vehicle and and then all being well more braking effort is being done by the trailer but I find it very fickle and very difficult to sort of set up the other thing to mention is that uh, multiple di different types of trailers that weigh different um, and carry more or less or are longer or shorter have more or less axles um, have more or less braking efficiency because of the way that they're designed uh, and that continually has to be adjusted by using these knobs and these these control systems here um, because what that does is it you know obviously the more brake the more axles you have the more braking effort you have and the, and the the more that the trailer breaks and so on and so forth so if you rent trailers because you don't own one um you're continually having to adjust this uh to, to sort of get you the right braking effort and it's actually not as easy as it seems because as i said it depends on whether the trailer's loaded and how big it is and how far you're towing it and all these other sorts of things and and so i don't like this system very much i think it's far too finicky and it doesn't work very well 
However, one of the things I do like about this is that you see this little button here. Uh, this is a sort of an override so that you can actually apply the brakes as you as you're sort of going on um, without using the the tow vehicle brakes at all so you can they have these systems a very similar system in the uh, in the big trucks when i used to drive rtx over here they've got a, a lever on the side at column and you can pull that and it yanks on the trailer brakes which is handy if you've got a train because it'll allow you to snap the train back sort of level but anyway uh, so that's quite handy now if you are installing one of these i obviously read the instructions to how to fit these things because they're all different and you don't have to have this particular uh, this is a Tekonchi unit this is the one that land rover sold me so i assume this was the one that land rover recommended um i am 100 percent certain that there are better ones and this is about 10 year old now so i'm, I'm certain that the technology has come along as well but when you install this uh they do tell you to have it as sort of horizontal as possible and that's not always possible especially if you want to use this button because you don't want to be fiddling under dash if you're trying to get you know you're trying to get the brakes on so this is designed to be used somewhere quite near to the driver so that you can squeeze it on without reaching too far uh, but it also doesn't like to be vertical it likes to be as horizontal as possible now on the Range Rover you're a bit limited as to where to put these I have seen them tucked right underneath at footwell uh, and that's a bit of a problem because of course you can't then get at the, the thing but it does mean that the device is horizontal um, my last Range Rover wasn't an autobiography so the, the knee panel that sits in front of knee and underneath at steering wheel that would just plastic with that and a bit of foam on the front and so what I did with the last one is I just drilled the bracket into that screwed it into into frame there are some airbags behind this so you kind of have to make sure these screws aren't too long or else you or else it won't work will it um but this one here is an autobiography and i've just had a look under there poked my head under and it's all leather and i don't know that i want to go and screw into leather um if i can help it so i'm going i'm going to try and stick it on with some sticky foam pads now i've never had a lot of luck with them foam pads whether or not i use um uh, a cleaning agent or whatever but a couple of months back maybe about six or eight months back tim from defender 3d kindly sent me some stuff at disco and he did send me some super duper extra strong 3m sticky foam pad chaps uh and so i'm going to try and use one of them and, and hopefully it'll sort of stay where it needs to be now this cable comes directly from Land Rover I'm certain that you can find them now on eBay or whatever and, and you can see how it works I mean it just plugs into into this unit and then just plugs up into dash I am going to try and do my best to show you where it plugs up into dash but like I've just mentioned the the access to that panel is right underneath the uh, the where your feet go where pedals are um, and it's just going to be a bit difficult to film <laughs> but basically you just find the right receptive for this and you plug this in and then you stick this to the dashboard and that's as that's as complicated as it gets really it's not there's nothing rocket science about it i'm going to put this back on and that's basically that now the other thing i'm not going to show you this today because it's not sort of relevant but um the other thing to bear in mind if you're north american and uh, and or australian is that they have what they call maybe they don't have them in australia um but they have over here what they call a, a receiver this one's a, a bit more uh complex than most of the others because normally the ball mount uh is that thing to which the ball is mounted and then that slides in now this is slightly different because as you can see it's adjustable the i don't need the adjustment because i don't have a lift kit this is of course made for pickup trucks and, and what have you that have these lifts on them or whatever lift kits on them bearing in mind that most pickup trucks don't have air suspension so of course once you started loading trailer up the back end of the trailer sits down so you, you might want sort of pick ball up a bit before you load it knowing that it's going to load the trailer down and bring back a pickup truck but anyway i don't use the adjustable side of this the only reason i've got this is because i mostly use uh, what they call a net what we call a nato witch or a, a pin um uh pintle itch um 
because I like them because once the things are locked down, if you tow it out, out, it can't come off. But anyway, that's one of those stories. So what I do is I, I have this because I like to be able to mount that to it, and then if I needed to, uh, swap that that ball or itch part out altogether by just taking these pins out rather than unbolting a bunch of bolts. Um, but this is a lot longer than it needs to be, as you can see. This is the only one they make that's, uh, that, that does what we need to do. It's like a Dixon Bait style sort of a thing, isn't it? But what I'll do is I'll chop this off. I'll chop either bottom four or three holes off or something so it doesn't dig in ground so much. Um, but the thing I've, I've brought this out for is because uh, if you can imagine that my pintle itch mounts onto this, uh, it comes out a good way. So you can see, here's your, here's your hole for mounting. This is where your pin goes. Now my the itch comes out about yay far well that's a good foot um, and the reason that it has to come out that far is because the receiver the, the, the mount the tow bar bracket I suppose you won't call it the receiver that fits to the car it fits right underneath and that is designed to do so so of course that it doesn't drag if you you know if you're climbing out steeper the departure angle is improved um, and, and it's handy, you know, in that sense, but it does come with a, a bit of a downside, and the downside is that the, the length of the tow bar you have has to be quite long. Consequently, I go over the top and I buy a solid bar. Now, this is rated to £14,000. I'll never tow that much, of course, um, because car's not rated for it, but I've, I always buy over-engineering knowing that the length of this whole assembly adds quite a lot of force to to this poor little pin at the back here and so i am just try and strengthen it up as best I can but anyway so that's uh, that's something you need to bear in mind if you if you are in North America and you want to put a tow bar on uh, you're going to have to look for a, a long receiver itch or a long ball mount or whatever they want to call them over here uh, so that um, the ball actually clears the back of the bumper um, and that's that so that's really all i've got on today and i'll we'll move on now um over to front of the thing and i'll try and shove gopro in <laughs> in a way that you can see inside a bit challenging because it's tight up there and dark but let's see how we get on so this is going to be a bit tricky to show you but basically we have a screw here and you've got a screw here and then you have a screw here and then this panel has a, a right angle that comes down behind here and there's a screw uh, sort of roughly about here so when you pull this off you have to sort of get behind here and take that screw out and then finally you've got this this uh, clip here that's only half a twist uh, the difficult, and then you've got, uh, in terms of connections, you've got uh, the the light for the the power for the light, and then up here, of course, you've got your OBD2. Now the OBD2 is relatively easy to pull out uh, because it it slides out with a grey plug, but it, it it does also clip in, which means you've got to give it a bit of a twist side to side to sort of pull it out. And then this is your final screw, and you have to pull this out from behind this L-shaped piece. Now, the wire that you will need will be roughly positioned at the top of this brake pedal. Um, I found mine very hard to find because there was a bunch of wires in front of it, uh, and mine was a sort of a, a greyish plug with a, uh, a kind of a multi bunch of wires on the way in. Uh, on you know feeding it uh, and so you can see how it's just a bit awkward to get at rather than difficult now I've left my cables out like this and I will shove them back in uh, around the side and I've run it over the top of the um, these here are heat events as you probably know uh, the other thing I've just mentioned is that there's or I'm going to mention is that right behind here you know, I'm going to shove this light somewhere that you can see with, but right behind here is a is a, a heat duct, uh, and that was very full of um, 
very full of dirt so I pulled it out and cleaned that up while I was underneath here. Uh, make sure you don't trap when you put this back, make sure you don't trap there's a bunch of wires that go over the top of this heater duct. Make sure you don't trap those and make sure that you get the pins, the location pins that are at the side of these two plugs, make sure you get those seated in so you can squeeze this up all the way. Now uh, this is, you're going to need a T20 uh, because there's a couple of little screws underneath here uh, that you may or may not be able to see. I'll just reach across here and try and put on big on it. Uh, so there's about three screws here uh, that you need to pull out. And uh, this little panel here isn't terribly difficult to get at, uh, but it is a bit fiddly. So there's three screws. Here's one. Uh, well, there was three screws. That one's disappeared altogether. And then here's the other. And then you're going to need a flat bladed screwdriver uh, to pull out uh, the little clip affair that mounts on the back that sort of holds it in at a right angle. And I'll just uh, I'll show you that there. And I'll try and uh, this is just a like a half a quarter turn thing, whatever it is, and then this thing flicks off. Uh, and then you can see here's one. There was one here in the middle, but this this whole panel just sort of kind of pops down. But you've got to mess around with it a lot because it's uh, it's a bit awkward to get at. And and on the back, of course, you've got this light up area that needs to be sort of removed. Ooh, there's another one. So bring this camera here. But there's another screw there. Can you see? Uh, like I said, it's very difficult to get the camera in here to show you where all these bits are. I am sure that Simon of Powerful UK would have a much better way of doing this than I am. He's a bit of a genius with his camera things, is Simon. Uh, this grey clip slide sideways and then when it slides out you are able to pull this directly out uh, to give you a little bit more room what you need is going to be right up the back here and it's really quite awkward to get to which is why I said that it's a bit of a challenge to film Okay, this takes a little bit of effort, but this will come out if you just give it a bit of a pull in the right direction. I think this grey plug here is what you need to plug into, and it's located sort of just above the brake pedal really, which would make sense. Uh, but I couldn't find it because this bundle of wires was hat in front of it. Uh, but as you can see, it's really easy to get at. Well, easy to see when you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to take this now. I'm going to plug it into that. Like that. <laughs> now I'm going to leave this and tuck this up here because that's where I ran the last one and I'm going to do the same this time. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it over the top of that heater duct so that it's out of the way. Just feed it up there out of the weight of the airbag and then you can shove what's left of this what's left of this 
wire you can just tuck there and then uh, eventually you can just shove it back into that um, into that you know into the, the dashboard and it's out of the way a bit and then basically all you've got to do he says is shove that panel back on you know, which is as Haynes would say simply the reversal of removal which we all know is neither simple nor anything else around the back is a little screw that you've got to take out and this one is the one that uh, you didn't see me take out um, and then you've got another one at the front that pops into that top piece at the back that's that and the light out this up here but you're going to need to drag that will be D plug out wherever it went right first perhaps There are some little pokey chaps that to locate along the front edge and those need to go into the holes before you screw the screw into location or else you're going to have this lip, this cover being a bit proud from where it should be. And then finally, the last thing is this twist lock, and then that is everything in place. And there we go, that's what it looks like in position. Uh, I did actually screw it in the end because I couldn't get anything to stick to the leather, and, and what I've done is I've, I've sort of screwed it through the stitching. So when you pull it out, you won't really, hopefully you wouldn't, really, if you wanted to pull it out, you wouldn't really see it. So uh, that sort of, that sort of what I've, I've done now, I've mounted it, and, and I think that's as good as it's going to get. Right, so that's how you replace, or not replace, but that's how you install your, um, uh, your electronic brake control unit, or your, what do they call it, the... Uh, progressive brake control unit or whatever it is that it's called um, it uh, it's easier if you lie on your back uh, and and you've almost definitely got to take that uh, cowl off if you can feel your way around the back it can be done without taking that bottom panel off uh, I did do it that way the last time and uh, I found it a lot easier to do that way actually to be able to feel around and sort of find it. Once you know where it's located, uh, it, it's, it's quite accessible. Um, but I took the panel off in order to try and show you how to get at it and what you're looking for. Um, the uh, getting light up there is is a bit tricky because uh, my, my light is magnetic and there's very little magnetic to hang it from really. So it, it can be a bit frustrating as that light always moves around a bit and I was hampered this time of course by trying to trying to get the camera such that you can can see what I'm talking about uh, I did end up screwing the the um, the mount to the the dashboard for the 
for the control unit itself because uh, I, I stuck it on there and wandered away and cut that ball mount down and by the time I come back it had fallen off and it's in a very hot here as you can see um, so in the end I ended up screwing it up anyway I've gone through some of the stitching one of the, where the seam is on the stitching I'll put the screw through there and, and then uh, one on the other side as well to limit the amount of damage that there is to that, that panel but I don't intend on getting rid of the car and I do intend on towing a lot so mounting it in the right place sort of trumped um, Trump that I mean I, I guess if I sell it I'll just have to sell it with the tin or something probably about time to replace that unit because it it must be getting on for 10 or 15 years old uh, maybe 10 years at least um, and so that's that uh, the ball itch that I've um, cut down is drying on the bench I painted that and that'll slide in uh, and then tomorrow I'm going over my pals to um, pick up those brackets for the roof rack uh, because they'll be done tomorrow with any luck and uh, and then on Monday I'm going to drop them off at the powder coaters to have them done to match the, the roof rack uh, and then basically uh, well, that's all I've got coming up for the, for the next bit I, I am a couple of months ahead on the video so <laughs> by the time you get this video I, I might have done a few more things but uh, anyway that's where I am at the moment so thank you very much for tuning in uh, please like and subscribe and let me know if you need me to cover any other content and I'll do what I can I have just put um, some new stoppy boys on as snake fab says uh, and I, I did use um, uh, EBC's green stuff pads uh, and I'll probably be doing a review of them just shortly because the performance is, is significantly better than with the genuine ones but anyway we'll discuss that later on thanks very much see you next time cheerio